Today, more than ever, we're inside creatures. As a result, everyone is becoming more concerned with the indoor environment. Mold is one issue that has in recent years been a high-profile concern for school administrators. The other primary concern? Asthma and related breathing problems caused by airborne dust and other allergens. During the next few moments, you'll see solid information that can help you understand these issues, as well as improve the lives of your students and everyone using your facilities. Mold is a fact of life. It's always been around. Most of it, like what you might see in a shower stall, may be unsightly, but it's harmless. It's just there. On the other hand, some mold can become airborne and aggravate allergies. And if not dealt with in a timely manner, this type of mold can become a serious health hazard. What causes mold? Several conditions make its growth more likely. Among them, a food source, paper, wood, natural fibers, even dirt. Another contributing condition, moisture, often in the form of humid air. Moderate temperatures, particularly between 68 and 86 degrees, and stagnant air may also be factors. And the last element, time. Mold shows little growth during the first day or two, then relies on the other conditions to thrive. One thing worth noting and always remembering, mold does not grow on clean, dry, synthetic carpet. Repeat, it does not grow on clean, dry carpet. One of the biggest sources of mold in its spores? Improperly operated and maintained HVAC systems. Eliminating such things as water leaks and controlling humidity can greatly deter the potential for mold growth. How do we know that? In a Florida study conducted by Host Racine Industries, six schools were checked for indoor air problems. Dust-lined, moldy air ducts and plumbing leaks onto ceiling tiles encouraged mold growth and the release of millions of spores into the air. The research supported the finding that mold and mildew are not associated with a particular surface, such as carpet. The study also confirmed that carpet cleaning significantly reduces the level of mold spores in carpet dust with no increase in airborne levels. Effective operating systems and routine maintenance are the keys to improving indoor air quality in schools. The Florida School study found a link between allergy and related health complaints and elevated indoor humidity. The more humid the environment, the higher the level of health concerns. In rooms with no complaints, no visible mold growth, and no odors, the relative humidity remained between 45 and 69 percent. But what about all that other stuff flying around in the air? Dust, dirt, and allergens invisible to the naked eye. Medical experts agree that airborne particles frequently trigger nose, sinus, and lower airway problems. A close look at scientific testing using computational fluid dynamics modeling confirms what's really happening in a carpeted classroom. These simulations were conducted using supercomputers at Solution Labs in Pensacola, Florida. Carpet's textured surface catches and traps falling particles, keeping more allergens out of the breathing zone. These trapped particles can be easily removed and contained using a CRI Green Label Approved Vacuum. This is especially critical for students and others with allergies, asthma, and breathing concerns. Similar modeling tests simulating rooms without carpet confirm these findings. Because children tend to be more active and closer to the floor, they are at greater risk. In an uncarpeted room at a child's height, substantially more dust and allergens are suspended in the air and breathable. This graph is based on quantitative indoor air quality sample testing in controlled rooms, one carpeted, one not. These results again confirm carpet's particle trapping effect. Another important study, completed in 2002 on behalf of the European Community Respiratory Health Survey, adds further credence to carpet's positive respiratory role. This study found a statistically significant relationship between reduced asthma symptoms and carpeted bedrooms. What about cleaning? An approved vacuum with fully contained filtering system captures 350% more allergens than typical cleaning methods for uncarpeted floors. These results indicate the difference cleaning methods can make. The approved vacuum was dramatically more effective at keeping dust particles out of the breathing zone than dust mopping the hard surface. 
Of course, for a wide range of advantages unrelated to air quality, carpet is the wisest flooring choice for the educational environment. It's the preferred classroom flooring among more than 70% of all U.S. teachers. Its tactile surface helps reduce slips and falls, and its cushioning effect reduces the severity of injuries should a fall occur. Carpet also provides much better acoustics for learning. It's 10 times more effective in reducing airborne noise. And carpet is easier and less costly to maintain than other flooring surfaces. Bottom line, for the two major indoor environmental health concerns facing schools today, mold and airborne particles, and for so many other reasons, properly maintained carpet can provide a real benefit. Stated simply and directly, carpet has no adverse effect on indoor air quality and is not a source for mold. So now, at school, at home, or at work, we can all breathe a lot easier, assuming, of course, the floors are carpeted.